And here we go. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of The Big Idea. I am your host, Dr. Jeffrey Hanna, here at Clear Chiropractic, where what we talk about is how a very small problem located where your head meets the top of your neck can actually have very big effects in affecting your overall quality of health, your quality of life, in ways that you would never think are actually connected in that particular way. And in this video here, we're going to be talking about something that I've been seeing more commonly of late as a byproduct of people getting well. And this is related to, for lack of a better term, I'm going to say anxiety. Now, anxiety comes in multiple different forms and flavors, and the kind that I'm referring to is more that internal angst, that kind where there is like a, a ghost in the machine. You don't necessarily identify as being an anxious kind of person, but it's as if your nerves on the inside are overloading and bombarding your brain. And it's not a very nice feeling. You have all of the reasons why life should be good, but your body is playing a trick on your brain to a certain degree. And what I've been finding is I've been finding that a lot of people who experience vertigo, who experience dizziness, who experience some other form of head-neck kind of condition, that they have been saying in the background, oh, okay, yeah, and this is after the effect, after they've started care here, they're saying, I'm noticing changes with my clarity in my head. I'm feeling less anxious. I'm feeling less agitated. And this has been the byproduct of them getting well. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to explain at least some of the neurology about how that is possible, what the connection is between the upper part of your neck and between those parts of your brain that are ultimately responsible for processing this kind of balance and also this uh, this anxiety quote unquote type of information. Alrighty, so the first thing that we're going to look at here is a little bit of basic anatomy. And what we're looking at is we're looking at the muscles that are in the deepest layer along the back of your neck. You know, oftentimes we talk about your core muscles and people think of their abdomen or the pelvic floor, things like that. Well, we have deep core muscles and that's what provides the structure, the stability of the vertebra all the way at the top of our neck. We have them along the front side and we also have them along the back side. And these particular muscles anywhere in your core, they are actually not designed for primary movement. Quite the contrary. What they are involved with is they are involved with telling your brain about how well all of the bits and pieces are actually capable of moving. And yes, if they're injured, they will be sending your brain pain signals. But this is my point. These muscles are actually laden with what are called proprioceptors, which you can think of it as posture row receptors. They have to, everything to do with muscle tone, tension, and they are also very, very dense in pressure receptors that detect changes in movement, changes in tone, and they are ultimately involved with processing and giving those parts of your brain the information that's necessary to coordinate your vision, your hearing, and also your balance. And what I want to draw your attention to in particular is this muscle right here. So just to help give you a little bit of orientation, what we're looking at is we're looking at the deepest layer of your back. And so this here is the bone, the big giant bones, kind of like at the back of your ear. And on the base of your skull is located right across here. And so what you have is you have this particular muscle here that is called an obliquus capitis inferior. And what it does is it runs between the C1 and the C2 vertebra in your neck. And it is extremely dense in muscle receptors. If you want to feel this for yourself, find that bone where we were talking about right there, that big giant bone behind the base of your ear, come down literally one finger width and start rotating your head like this. You'll actually be exactly over where that particular muscle is. Now, why does that, ma that matter? This is a very commonly cited paper because it discusses extreme implications about the importance of this particular muscle. 
All right. What this was is this was a research paper that was done in the Neurology Journal of India, where they were measuring the amount of muscle spindles. Those are one types of those proprioceptive organ, and they're involved again in muscle tone, uh, tension regulation, all that sort of stuff. And they measured to see what was their density in these particular muscles. And what they're finding, the distribution and arrangement of spindles within the muscles and their arrangement with study, the spindle density of the superior oblique muscle was found to be 190. The inferior oblique, that was the one that we just mentioned, 242. And the rectus capitis posterior uh, contained 98 per gram of muscle. Okay, so those numbers in and of themselves are not going to mean too terribly much. So let me give you a bit of perspective, okay? Very, very common where people talk about, ah, oh, I have tightness, I have problems, I feel it in my shoulders, I feel it in my trap, okay? Your trapezius muscle has also been studied to know about how many of these proprioceptors, these muscle spindles are there. And there are two muscle spindles per gram of tissue. So keeping that in mind, the muscle in the upper part of your neck with the highest density of these same things, that inferior oblique, the one that we just showed you, has 242, over 100 times more sensory nerve receptors. And what these sensory nerve receptors do, like we said, they are sending information to your brain. So in this regard, these muscles are designed not for primary movement. They are designed in order to give your brain the information about where it is in open space. That's what their function is. So we can appreciate that, you know, if there should be disruption to this area, that can have the potential to cause a lot of really, really nasty effects. Posture imbalances, dizziness, vertigo, headaches, migraines, all kinds of different nasty things like that. But those are the kinds of things that we oftentimes associate with the problem in the head or the neck. The question you might be wondering then, okay, Jeff, what does this have to do with the sense of anxiety? Okay, well, that's what I'm going to come to next. Okay, what I'm going to talk about is a processing center in your brain, in the upper part of your um, medulla, so that's the um, primary center of your brain stem that's responsible for all of your life functions. You have what's known as the reticular formation. It is a cluster of a whole bunch of different cells, different processing centers, if you would, that receive all of the primary information from all different parts of your body. Not just your muscles, your bones, your joints, your ligaments, but also your internal organs, your heart, your lungs, your digestive, your reproductive, your thyroid, your immune system, and also the lining of your blood vessels, which are going to be controlled by what are called sympathetics. Okay, So lots and lots of information all going through this area. And there's a particular part, it's more of a little bit of an offset from the reticular formation. It is what's known as the locus ceruleus. You don't really need to know, okay, what, you know, how to spell that or anything like that. But what it is, is it is the center that receives a large amount of that same kind of information, information about the state of the body. And what it acts as is a filter that processes that information, which in turn goes off to what is known as your limbic, assist, your limbic system or your amygdala. This is the one that's involved with the processing of emotions and also coordination of flight, fight, freeze responses. In other words, the sense of danger. So what my point, what I'm getting at is that if and when you have information that goes into the locus ceruleus, it has the potential to start be setting off alarm bells inside of your head. So how is that related to your upper neck? Well, let me show you. Okay, now this is really if you are a glutton for punishment in terms of understanding your neurology. What we're looking at here is a cross-section of your spinal cord. Over here it's showing all of the different clusters of cells and also the tracks. Think of them like wires that are sending information down to your body. 
And over on this side here, it's showcasing the wires, the tracks, and the clusters of nerves that are sending information back up to your brain. And in particular, what I'm going to highlight is what's called the posterior spinal thalamic. Fasciculus means tract or pathway. And then the anterior spinal thalamic tract. Emphasis particularly on this front one here because located between the two right through here is also what's known as a, uh, excuse me, cervicothalamic tract. And what this is, is this is going to be sending information, particularly from your neck, up to your brain to be properly processed. Now, do you remember what we were talking about with those muscle spindles going back a little bit? This is why this is so terribly important. Yes, you've got pain signals in your brain. You've got pressure receptors in your brain, but you've also got these proprioceptors going to your brain. And that obliquus capitis inferior in particular sends a huge amount of information relative to all other things. In other words, your neck sends so much information by comparison, that it's going to operate, it's going to take a whole bunch of your bandwidth. So you can appreciate then, if there might be a problem with your neck, your brain is going to be acutely aware that there's an issue. Now, normally, this information, this spinal thalamic tract, conveys pain information, temperature regulation, pressure sense, and also the overall state of blood vessels. However, it also receives a large amount of the information from those muscle spindles that are going to go up to the higher centers of your brain. Why would it do that? Because that coordinates gross motor control and balance reflex responses between your head and your neck. But what it also can do is if there is so much information, kind of like a car a traffic jam, where the roads are congested, that information can start to spill out to all other places of the head and the brain, including that locus ceruleus, the reticular formation. And if that part of the brain is being bombarded by abnormal information about the state of affairs, what did we say it's going to do? It's going to set off the internal alarm system and then bang, it's going to be triggering an internal sense of anxiety that's not necessarily coming from outside circumstances, but it's actually an alarm bell that's telling you that there is something wrong with the state of your body. But what do we do? We oftentimes look for outside reasons why that would be the case. And yes, that can absolutely be true. But it can also be where there's an internal sense something is not right. And again, this is the reason why I personally don't like using the word anxiety to describe this, because this is more of a case of your body playing a trick on your brain and it not coming from an outside source, but from coming from something internal. So the key then in terms of actually being able to help with this is to identify why are these signals going crazy in the first place. And to understand that, we can look at the relationship of the top two vertebrae in the neck where that obliquus capitis inferior just so happens to be. And that we found is actually the key to being able to help out people. Again, this has been more of a, a byproduct, just observation I've been seeing with a lot of people. But when we've been able to solve this particular problem that I'm about to show you, that seems to be making the biggest difference in helping people sleep better, they're saying, helping with balance equilibrium, helping with brain fog, and also helping this internal sense of anxiety. So let me show you what that's all about. Okay, so this really is the, the key for understanding what I've just talked about here. So what we've got is a little model. We're looking basically at the top-down view of the, the base of the head. So your brain sits right here. Your brain stem sits right in this area. So this is the back. This would be more toward the front. So we're looking from behind. Here's the top vertebrae in your neck, so you see one. Here's the second vertebrae in your neck, you see two. And the reason it's so big, because it's supposed to stick out like that, is it's the major anchor point for the muscles that go up to your head, I'll say that in a sec, and also all the muscles that are going to connect down to your lower neck, your shoulders, and even to a chain link action all the way down into your lower back. 
So what we have is the normal pivot joint that occurs between your C1 and between your C2. What it does is it rotates like this. This is what allows and gives us as human beings about 50% of all of our ability to turn our head and to turn our neck. And that is its normal action, okay? Now, here's what the problem is, is if we've ever had some kind of a physical injury, whether it is affecting the alignment of the upper bone relative to your head or anywhere below, whether it's between the C2 and the C3, the C3 and the C4, even if it's down to the L4 and the L5 and the L5 and the S1 joints in your lower back, What's going to happen because these joints all interlink like that and there is nothing else in your entire spine that produces this kind of movement. What's going to happen if your nervous system is going to try to dissipate that stress and that tension and what it's going to do is it's going to have this kind of effective twisty action that works its way up like that in order to compensate. And What's going to happen is that stress is going to be absorbed into this area between the C1 and the C2 vertebra. And this is one of the reasons why headaches are so terribly common for people. Why is that? It's because when you have a constant turn like this, what it's gonna do, it's gonna stretch the surrounding ligament. You irritate the ligament and it feels like there's this nasty bruise on the back of your neck. Most likely it's in that space right there. But hear what I'm saying. It's that the C1 and the C2 vertebra very oftentimes are the compensation. This is not where the primary problem is. But as strong and resilient as your body is, as it's going to try to compensate for these things by causing your posture to go funny and turning your head slightly one way, tipping your neck, tipping your shoulder, is if you have chronic rotation like this, where your body just can't unlock that. Why? Because it's trying to compensate for something else. What it's going to do is it's going to put strain on that obliquus capitis inferior muscle here. And on the side that's getting stretched, guess what? That means that there's going to be the constant triggering of those muscle spindles, very high density, that are going to go up to those parts of your brain. And they are going to be bombarded Barding your brain with information, information about position sense, pressure, and what happens with that information like we just showed you. What it's going to do is it's going to A, go to the parts of the brain that are going to overlap and coordinate your vision, your hearing, your balance, your equilibrium. So it's one major cause and issue as it relates to dizziness, vertigo, tinnitus, those kinds of things. But what a large chunk of that information can also do is it can spill over into adjacent structures, that spinal thalamic tract, and what it's going to do is it's going to bypass going on its way up to the brain and it can end up in the locus ceruleus. And if that happens, then what happens is that normal modulating system in terms of how you're feeling, your internal sense of well-being, calmness, and all that sort of stuff, it's getting danger, danger, danger signals. Now, what that means is it means, as we said, neurologically, your brain is told that there's a problem and it's hitting the alarm button and your brain is registering that. And before you know it, you can start to experience these different kinds of symptoms. Now, I should also add in this particular regard, it is that, you know, as try as we might to dismiss or to ignore these kinds of symptoms, you, you really can't do that. It takes an incredibly strong person when their body is playing a trick on their brain to be able to continue to be able to continue to operate and enjoy their life in the face of such challenge. It's the abnormal person, the abnormal person who has these things going on, who doesn't feel like it's affecting their life one way or another. But what's very important right here is that we understand that there's a difference between cause and effect because what you see, the sense of internal angst and anxiety that I've just described, and keep in mind that you can have this happen for a number of different reasons, but the kind that I'm describing here is the effect. It's not the primary cause. So if you are looking to just simply resolve, bring your body back to equilibrium without addressing what that underlying cause is, 
guess what? That danger signal is just going to keep going off. Things are not going to fully resolve, and that message is going to keep getting louder and louder and louder. It's going to change to the point where you can't necessarily compensate for it anymore. And that's when it can start showing up as really nasty kinds of conditions. So as bad as, you know, again, a sense of anxiety can be, that is when it's going to evolve and it's going to morph. It's going to turn into migraine. It's going to turn into vertigo. It's going to turn into what's called the Meniere's syndrome. It can manifest also as facial pain, oftentimes what's called a, a trigeminal neuralgia or a suboccipital neuralgia. Point being, your body tries to compensate. Your body's designed to win, but it can only absorb the stress for so long before something gives. So what we need to understand, what we need to appreciate is that if and when we are experiencing a sense of anxiety, the question is, why is that? Things don't happen in your body for no reason. And there's a lot of stuff. There's an awful lot of stuff that can go layered on top of this. Again, it can be your environment. It can be circumstance. It can be that you've experienced really horrific trauma that's been imprinted on your nerve system. But whatever the solution is, whatever the solution is, you have got to be looking at what the, uh, excuse me, what the cause is, not simply treating the effect. Yes, do and take what you've got to take, but always look to the underlying cause. So especially if you are also experiencing neck pain, headaches, balance, equilibrium issues, hearing issues, chronic pain, all of these things are pointing that your symptoms are very likely connected in this particular regard. And thus, essential having a look to see, is there some kind of abnormal action that's occurring between that C1 and between that C2 vertebra that could be affecting you? Because that very well might be the key to being able to get your life back on track here. Awesome, so hope you guys have enjoyed this particular video. If you have, please do like, subscribe so that YouTube recognizes this use of your video, shares it with other people. Number two, if you know friends, family, please do share this video with them. My passion, my purpose is in helping people improve their quality of life. However, I need your help in order to be able to do that. Share this message with them. And last but certainly not least is if you're thinking, hmm, this really resonates with me, what I'm going to ask you to do is you go to BlairChiropractic.com and you'll find a directory of Blair Upper Cervical Chiropractors who do all the same work as myself in your local area so that you can be able to experience the benefits as well. And if, of course, you are in the eastern Washington, northwest Idaho area, I um, work at Clear Chiropractic uh, here in Spokane, Washington. My personal website is drjeffreyhanna.com, where you'll find all kinds of other videos, blogs, just like this one right here. And feel free to send me an email. I will respond to you personally if you want to have a coordinated chat conversation, just to find out if there's something that I can do to help you out. And if you're ready to take that next step, give us a ring. Our offices are located at Mead and at South Hill. You call 509 509- 315-8166. Mention you saw this video, and we'll be sure to help you out the very best that we can. Thanks for watching. This is Dr. Jeffrey Hanna at Clear Chiropractic. Get well, live well, stay well. So until next time, take care. Bye-bye.